Hello out there. Uh, I wanted to do a little teardown of this National Instruments USB KPPHS, uh, which I bought from China a few weeks ago. Um, I've already opened the thing and tested it that it works. So I kind of want to show out the uh, case itself. It looks like something that actually arrives from National Instruments. You've got the logos here. Of course, you've got the classic China tape around it. Uh, they had to put that on. I actually got some information about the model and show some serial numbers. Box, you got some additional information about packaging and everything. And then some more logos around it. Um, inside the box, you'll find this little nice bag, which got ESD and it got bubble wrap inside it. With again some serial numbers and so. And you also got the void label on it if seal is broken. Then you got just uh, the uh, manual for it, including a driver. Of course, this is in Chinese, so that's what you expect. I will not tear this up because if I had to sell it later, um, you can see that it is not opened. And of course, I have already this one beside me. We got the Kipip itself. So when I opened this initially, um, I was kind of curious about what kind of marks I'll find out this because there's two things this can be. It could either be a good copy of it or this could be a used one. So of course I'll look around the uh, edges of the connector itself to see if there's any scratches, but there was not really any marks. I could see just like a slight amount of dust around it, but not much. But did find a little mark up here. We have a mark over here, uh, it's really hard to see, but what I mostly found was the back side, we have some scratches here, and some here. Got the label itself with the uh, serial number on it, and also on the sides of it. So it indeed does look like this one is used, which I'm glad to see, because that means this actually may be an original one. The cable says I have used one of these before, so I do know a bit about how they're supposed to look. And the connector itself, the USB interface, it really looked like an original. But there's only one way to really find this out. I never tear one of these uh, down, so I'm not sure how these are supposed to look inside. But of course, that is the thing we are curious about. Because you know how China is. If it's Chinese, they will use a lot of gunk inside it. But you never know if they actually use that in the originals. Only if you have looked up the teardown these. So, open it up like that. And let's see. Got the screws right here. There you go. So inside we find something that looks like a little RAM. A little chip here which are... It's not scraped, but you can see the labeling on it. Uh, this looks like a little flash. Got a few SYCs there. Um, maybe a level converter, I'm not sure. Of course a crystal, and we've got USB itself. Uh, the USB cable is uh, of course a nice and shielded USB cable. And a little thing up here. 24, yeah that's a, that's an EEPROM we got up here. Interesting. So it, it does not look bad inside, so if we try... See if we can pull this out without taking this off. And the back side we've got a nice little crystal over here, but not really a lot around this. We've got some capacitors around the main IC, and uh, of course a lot of nice test points. Interesting enough, the PCB itself does not have a serial number on board. So that could indicate this being a copy. Um, and you could see around the port here, um, they have not cleaned off the flux. So those are actually not that good signs. Um, because normally you 
I would expect something when you buy this, which cost around was a five thousand kroner Danish kroner. Something like this would be perfect. And we also got what is that? Is that what is this? We got something left over here. Yeah, there it is. That gotta be glue leftovers, but I don't see any glue inside the um, thing itself. It just got some weird leftovers. It's definitely glue. That's weird. Why would they leave something like that in here? Also, I expect if this was a Chinese copy, I would expect these, instead of using this fancy connector which you're using right now for the USB, this is a fancy SMD connector. I would actually expect them to just go and use something like um, a normal, uh, what's it, GST connector. But they actually went and used some fancy one. So it may be an original, but it may not. Now we did see that it did not have the serial number on it. Um, if I had bought two of these, it might have indicated that it had two different serial numbers, but I'm not sure about this. So, yeah, it does look original, but it does also not look original. So, I hope that somebody finds this useful. Um, I was trying to find it myself a little tear down this Chinese copies, but, or at least Chinese, but I did not find anything. So for some final words about this, so after I recorded the video, I started looking into uh, how else the different types that you can find on Google looks like. So if you look here, this is the one I got myself. Um, what I really noted was, uh, when looking into this, this chip sits so close to this plastic housing. Um, knowing National Instruments, this is things they would have realized and they will have fixed. And the same with some, you can see something like this labeling here. I think things like this, they would have created in their CAD program so they were sure that this was going to be correct. Um, and not just overlap like this. And after then googling a bit about this, uh, I found another picture which is from a different guy and you can see here things still sit really close to the edge here but it's not overlapping with the plastic itself. And you can also see <laughs> another detail I just spotted here. We've got two screws here, right? We are missing one in this corner. Isn't that weird? Uh, but you still, we got the same connector here, um, but you see there are more details, there's an additional double shielding around this, instead of just having a single shielding, uh, which we got over here, which is the classic uh, shielding rod. Uh, so this does kind of look like a, a classic cable you can buy from China. Um, you can also see we have the big crystal, which we have on the back side, on the front side here, and we've got a different IC here, and the same with the main controller. Um, memory is still the same. Um, and we also do have this chip here, which also was the one up sitting up here. Um, so those are also the same. We're missing a little hole here, I think maybe being a screw, not sure. Um, but else it, it kind of seems like it's the same. We've got some different tensile capacitors. Um, but else I've kind of started to trust this one more because you could also see that. Um, this casing here has a finish which might do some additional shielding where this one's just a, a raw plastic enclosure. So I do think this one is a copy, but it works, but it's still a copy. Um, so it can maybe cause some problems. I'm not going to try to register the one I got because it may cause my thing to not work. Uh, it's imagine something like National Instruments made a program that if they realize this one is a fake, they will just cause the device to not work. But I'm not sure about it, but I'm not going to try to register this one. So yeah, it was just a little update after doing some additional research.